Hi, thank you so much for tuning back into this week's reading of The Story, written by Max Licato and Randy Frazzi. This is a continuous novel based on the Bible. What an incredible journey and what an incredible Bible study. Thank you for coming along. Now this is part C. So we have done part A was the question and answer for chapter 6. And then part B is the beginning of the reading of um, chapter 7, the battle begins. And now this is part C, the continuation of that chapter. We are on page 93, the middle of it. We were just talking about the incredible love that God has for all walks of life. And especially, especially who God refers to as the least of these. The people that the people that maybe society tosses aside <coughs> and doesn't recognize them as being loving, worthy people. He has just said this that that shout. For the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall be spared. Because she hid the spies we sent. Because she loved the Lord. Not because of her sin. It's because she loved the Lord. That gives everybody great hope. So... Thank you so much for tuning back in, and let's keep reading. Now, I just might overheat. I'm um, menopausal, and to try and act like it's not happening is uh, very hard to do, now, especially since I've got my sweater on. But anyway, I'll try and get through this. If i got to take my sweater off, I will. Okay, so let's start reading. When the trumpets sound, and please also to know I do hear the sound from outside. But as I said earlier, we have come to a time in our life uh, for Ken and I, my husband and I, that we can live in a hotel setting. I absolutely love it. And, um, but because of that, where I'm situated in, this, uh, in, in our hotel room and, and our suite uh, right now, this is our, our office suite as well, um, there are um, machines outside the window. So I just want to be conscious of that, that I do hear that. And I'm working on that so that it won't be in all these videos and, and maybe hard for you to hear. I want to be mindful um, that you're able to properly hear me. Okay, so, so thank you very much. Um, let's start reading. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. <clears throat> so the young men who had done the spying went in and brought out Rahab, her father and her mother, her brothers and sisters, and all who belonged to her. They were brought out, they brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it, but they put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, with her family and all who belonged to her because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho. <clears throat> and she lives among the Israelites to this day. At the time Joshua pronounced this solemn oath, 
cursed before the Lord is the one who undertakes to rebuild this city, Jericho. Sorry. Oh, hang on. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his and his fame spread throughout the land. God had told Joshua and all the Israelites that the spoil of war was his alone, and everyone obeyed, except for one man, Achan, Achan, A-C-H-A-N, Achan. As a result of Achan's sin, God was not with Israel, was not with the Israelite army when they attacked Ai. Ai. Joshua and the other leaders were humiliated and confused. When God revealed that the defeat was because Achan had sinned, the people repented and Achan was killed for his actions. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of, I'm just gonna call it Ai, and I'm hoping I'm saying it correctly, Ai, Ai his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to I as its kings, as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their, their plunder and livestock for yourselves and set an ambush behind the city. Early the next morning, Joshua mustered his army and he and the leaders of Israel marched before them to Ai. The entire force that was with them marched up and approached the city and arrived in front of it. They set up camp north of Ai and the valley between them and the city. <clears throat> Joshua had taken about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai, Ai, to the west of the city. So the soldiers took up their portions with the main camp to the north of the city and the ambush to the west of it. That night, Joshua went into the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all the men of the city hurried out in hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle at a certain place overlooking the Arabah. But he did not know that an ambush had been set against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel let themselves be driven back before them, and they fled towards the wilderness. All the men of Ai were called to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and were lured away from the city. Not a man remained in Ai or Bethel who did not go after Israel. They left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, hold out towards, towards Ai the javelin that is in your hand, for into your hand I will deliver the city. So Joshua held out toward the city the javelin that was in his hand. As soon as he did this, the men in the ambush rose quickly from their position and rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it quickly and set it on fire. The men of Ai looked back and saw the smoke of the city rising up to the sky, and they had no chance to escape in any direction. The Israelites, who had been fleeing towards the wilderness, 
had turned back against their pursuers. For when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city and that the smoke was going up from it, they turned around and attacked the men of Ai. Those in ambush also came out of the city against them, so that they were caught in the middle with Israelites on both sides. Israel cut them down, leaving them neither leaving them neither survivors nor fugitives. 12,000 men and women fell that day, all the people of Ai. Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel and Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites. After Joshua, read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it's written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and children and the foreigners who lived among them. God helped the Israelites to be victorious over the army of Ai. Yet Joshua made a mistake in not turning to God to guide him when some deceptive people from Gideon arrived. They pretended to be from a far off land and they sought a treaty with the Israelites. Joshua made the treaty without consulting the wisdom of the Lord. Then he found out that the delegation was really from Gideon, a neighboring tribe. He was constrained by his treaty so he could not conquer the people and take their land. Word got out about Joshua's peace treaty and other kings took up arms. You know, that just reminds me so much of that that you didn't that you didn't realize that you were around deceptive people. That you didn't you did it without consulting the wisdom of the Lord. And I think about that when when we desperately needed help with the estate and with our lawyer, with what happened with my mom and dad and the betrayal that happened there. I didn't seek the proper counsel. We didn't listen. And we were taken advantage of by people who set out to do the wrong thing. But that was their test too. When given the opportunity, what would they do with it? They chose to do the wrong thing. And from what we know, no matter what happens, no matter what we do, if we think that God didn't see it, they, he did. He knows. And we can read that from, we know that from reading uh, these chapters. So um, it's a very, very incredible time right now, especially with just everything that's going on and how they must know that God speaks because he gives them such incredible descriptive direction in what to do. Can you imagine that? And I think sometimes we don't listen to God enough to know what direction do we need to take? What are the things we need to do? When we pray, do we take time to listen to what God wants us to do? and have discernment when God is talking to us, that that is God talking to us and that we, that we know. That's amazing. And we're gonna to get to all that and how, and how does that work, right? How does prayer life look for you? Um, how is it? You know, are we listening? Are we fully getting out of it what, what God wants? Or do we just kind of throw out a prayer and hope for something, but really don't listen and engage and have that relationship 
of a close friend that we could talk to, that we could have coffee with, that we could talk to, that would know us, right? What in the, what a great, what great things to think about. Let's keep reading, we're on page 96. Now, Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it, doing to Ai as its kings, as he had done to Jericho and its king, and that the people of Gideon had made a treaty of peace with Israel and had come before their allies. He and his people were very much alarmed at this because Gideon was an important city, like one of the royal cities. It was larger than Ai, and all its men were good fighters. So Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, appealed to Hoham, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jarmath, Jephia, king of Lachish, and Dibur, king of Eglon. Come up and help me attack Gideon, he said, because it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon joined forces. They moved up with all their troops and took up positions against Gideon and attacked it. The Gideonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal. Do not abandon your servants. Come up, come up to us quickly and save us, help us, because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined voice, forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to, said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After an all night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at, Gideon, at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road up, up to Beth Horon and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. As they fled before Israel, on the road down from Beth Horon and Azekah. The Lord hurled large hailstones down on them, and more of them died from the hail than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Stand, son, Son, stand still over Gibeon, and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. I'm, ta I'm pausing here because I'm remembering a Bible study that I remembered studying about that that how they came out of Gilgal and God actually stopped it so that it remained dark. Sun, stand still over Gibeon and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies that's the mighty God that we have. He put the stars and the moon in place and he can 
tell them to start and stop and stopped the stopped time in order for them to avenge that. That's incredible, and I remember that Bible study. And now I'm reading it through. It's uh, it's very interesting. And as all of that is written in the book of Jashar, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a human being, surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua re returned with all Israel to the camp of Gilgal. Now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave at Makeda. When Joshua was told that the five kings had been found hiding in the cave at Makeda, he said, roll large rocks up to the mouth of the cave and post some men there to guard it. But don't stop. Pursue your enemies, attack them from the rear, and don't let them reach their cities. For the Lord your God has given them into your, la into your hand. So Joshua and the Israelites defended them completely. But a few survivors managed to reach their fortified cities. The whole army then returned safely to Joshua in the camp at Makeda. And no one uttered a word against the Israelites. Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me. So they brought the five kings out of the cave, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon. When they had brought these kings to Joshua, he summoned all the men of Israel and said to the army commanders who had come with him, come here and put your foot on the necks of these kings. So they came forward and placed their feet on the necks. Joshua said to them, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. Then Joshua put the kings to death and exposed their bodies on five poles. And they were left hanging on the poles until evening. At sunset, Joshua gave the order and they took them down from the poles and threw them in into the cave where they had been hiding. At the mouth of the cave, they placed large rocks which are there to this day. That day, Joshua took Makeda. He put the city and its king to the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it. He left no survivors, and he did to the king of Makeda as he had done to the king of Jericho. Wow, you guys, this is going to just take one more part, and we are going to stop there. So when we have a, t a, a title of a chapter, the battle begins, buckle up because it is quite a, a war zone. And, but the incredible thing that there was never a day like that since, that God literally stopped time, stopped the sun and, and the moon and stopped it and enabled um, he enabled his his uh, his his plans to proceed. That's incredible. So please tune back in. Uh, we will uh, have the last part. We're going to finish this chapter. We're going to go over the the questions for the next chapter, and uh, I can't wait to see how this ends. Though it is it is quite it is. It is quite the bloodbath, but that's really kind of the Old Testament. We've got to read it. We can't just uh, think that everything is just always rainbows and lollipops. It's not, as we read. It's a way different situation.
Did you know that? Did you know that it was going to be that way? And I'm sorry um, uh, that phone just did that. Um, but did you know that it was this way? When you think about the Bible and when you think about God, did you know these different things? I'd love to know that um, about your journey. So thank you. I'll see you right back.